This is AutoLine Daily reporting on all aspects of the global automotive industry. All the major automakers in the world are investing heavily in autonomous vehicles and we wondered if Hyundai was ever going to get in on the action. Well, it is. The Hyundai Group and Aptiv, that technology company that was spun off from Delphi in 2017, are forming an autonomous driving joint venture, which is already valued at $4 billion. They will start testing level four and five driverless vehicles next year. And by 2022, they plan to have a production ready AV platform available for robo taxi providers, fleet operators, and automotive manufacturers. The new JV for AVs will be headquartered in Boston, Massachusetts. That UAW strike against GM keeps grinding on and we are predicting it will go on for at least another week. One of the areas of contention is the use of temporary workers. GM says it needs temps for new model launches when it has to temporarily staff up and to fill in when full-time workers go on vacation. But the UAW wants to eliminate temps, or at least have them earn as much and get profit sharing like full-time workers. About 7% of GM's hourly workforce in the U.S. are temps, and they make a lot less money than traditional UAW workers. But at the non-union transplant factories, about 20% of the workforce are temporary workers, and that gives them a considerable labor cost advantage over General Motors. Uh Uh-oh, this does not look good. The global automotive industry is really starting to slow down. We've seen sales slow in China, in India, and Europe, and the news out of South America is looking pretty bleak as well. Wards reports that sales in South America were down more than 9% in August, and they're down more than 6% for the year. What we found astonishing is that 23 Chinese automakers now sell cars and heavy trucks in South America. While their sales numbers are small right now, you gotta believe that they are going to grow over time. Opening the door is the first interaction people have with their car. Make it a positive experience. With XL Entry, we'll help you make it smoother, quieter, and safer. We are KeyKurt, the global technology leader in automotive locking systems with operations in Metro Detroit. Open the door to new access systems. Visit us on newentry.com. Keyker, technology that leads. To reduce pollution and its dependence on fossil fuel, the Indian government is offering new incentives and tax cuts on EVs. That encouraged Tata Motors, the parent company of Jaguar Land Rover, to develop a new electric vehicle with about 155 miles of range for the Indian market. The unnamed vehicle will be out next year. And we imagine it could easily look into something like this, the Arsimoto three-wheeled two-seat electric. It has a range of roughly 100 miles and can travel up to 75 miles an hour. The company recently announced it's starting production and will soon make deliveries to customers in California, Oregon, and Washington. The company is based in Oregon. The launch edition is priced at just under $20,000 before rebates. Other highlights include removable doors, Bluetooth speakers, and lockable rear storage. Speaking of electrics, Faraday Futures' future is looking somewhat more promising. You may remember that Faraday was going to build a big greenfield assembly plant just outside of Las Vegas, but it ran out of money to do that. So now Faraday will use an old Pirelli tire plant in California, and it will make about 10,000 cars a year. Up first is the FF91, Faraday's newest flagship model, which boasts 1,050 horsepower and all-wheel drive range of 378 miles with a zero to 60 time under three seconds. It's got a price tag of $175,000. Faraday plans to have the FF91 in production by September of 2020, and its smaller Tesla-like FF81 is expected to go into production at the beginning of 2022. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone Tires, your journey, our passion, and by KeyKurt, technology that leads. 
at this year's CES, Audi and startup company Holleride showed off virtual reality technology that links a VR headset with sensors and the vehicle so content can adapt to the vehicle's movement in real time. It has to adapt to the car's movement or a lot of people will start getting car sick and throw up. And now Porsche partnered with Holleride and the media company Discovery to show off the technology in its cars. Passengers can choose an underwater adventure through time or a drone flight moving through a futuristic city. The idea is to entertain passengers and that technology is ideally suited for autonomous vehicles. Holleride is an open source platform, so we could see other automakers use the technology if it becomes popular. And speaking of video games and vehicles, when Ralph Gilles, the head of design at FCA, was on Autoline After Hours, he talked about hiring people right out of the gaming industry. So the example I'd use is if when I go to hire today, I hire a very different complexion of designer than I did 10 years ago. And we started the transition, I would say, about four or five years ago. Uh, we're hiring gamers. Uh, we're hiring uh, um, uh, textile designers, uh, especially software, even software engineers. We've actually taken some of our internal IT specialists and turned them into uh, design office uh, what? employees. Yeah. What? Uh, so the guys that <laughs> this were doesn't sound possible. Well, the guys that were fixing our laptops are now designing <laughs> software for for our infotainment systems, and it's it's getting to be to the point where that area is growing like nuts. Ralph explains that the platform inside the car is getting more powerful, so they need people like gamers or from IT to help with the complexity of those systems. And of course, you can watch that entire interview right now on our website or our YouTube channel. But that's it for today's show. Thank you for watching.